it's one of the most primitive forms of communication. You make an image, pictographs and language with that. So it's not that complicated. It's really about representing the world in a way that is slightly different from the way we are accustomed to looking at it. Different enough to stir our imagination, to expand our vision, to open up the sensibilities just to the idea of looking. It's a perceptual process. Most people don't look at anything. They navigate through the streets, through the crowds. We go from one place to another. We get our tasks done, but we don't look with the same way that an artist does who's using this kind of imagery. So it suddenly enlivens our experience. It's nothing more, but I think there has to be some urgency in that. It can't be merely a rehashing of, of the observable world, even though that requires great skill and the great patience. But something else has to happen for it to become, I think, as important a kind of art form that this particular idea merits, the idea of realism. Now we have sophisticated imagery and everybody says, oh, well, the photograph destroyed realist art. The photograph is only that moment in time. If I took a photograph of you and painted you, I would have to try to use it only as a means to getting back to the experience I have when I'm looking at you. And I never see a photograph, for me, that's as powerful as a painting of the same subject. And it comes only closest to when the photographer's vision of what he's photographing resonates with me. I say, oh, that's somebody who understands that experience and has taken a picture of that experience, not just because it's a wonderful configuration of form, but because something else in it 